Hello, everyone. Hi. I'm Michelle Gagno. I am here from Connections. I am the Community Engagement and Outreach Manager working out of the Pontiac region. And I'm here today with our guest, Erica Wimet, and she is a developmental service worker. Today, we're going to be talking about our caregiver circle, our events. And Erica's here today to talk to us about um, getting comfortable in uncomfortable situations as caregivers uh, when we need to provide personal care to somebody. Hi, Erica. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm good. So yeah, my name is Erica. Um, I'm a developmental service worker. I took the course in, at Algonquin College back home in Ottawa. Um, I graduated in 2013. And most of my experiences with um, people who have de developmental disabilities, uh, medically uh, fragile um, total care, and I also have a ton of experience working with seniors. Um, that, you, sorry. <laughs> no, that's fine. I was just going to say that's really great. Um, our caregiver program is for caregivers of seniors. Um, and then we're, we're really hoping to be able to learn from your professional take on it. Um, I am interested. Well, we had a workshop, actually. We invited Erica to do a workshop for caregivers in February. And at that point, we did. We talked all about uh, getting comfortable in uncomfortable situations. We talked about um, providing personal care like toileting and bathing, changing clothes. Um, and we talked about lifts and different things like that. So all sorts of good stuff. So today on our live, I'm hoping to revisit that for those that did not get the chance to to come to our workshop on February 10th. Um, so as a caregiver, once like you're a pro professional caregiver, so you don't have a, an intimate personal relationship with your clients necessarily. So that's like a good thing because you've learned tips and tricks on on how to, to to deliver that kind of care while making everybody comfortable, right? So as a caregiver, a role if we're doing something like personal care, our it could be that you know we're doing it for a loved one. This changes our role in their lives, um, and it can be really awkward, right? It depends on on the kind of relationship you have with that person, their level of comfort, their own boundaries. Um, oftentimes the person we're caring for might be struggling with a loss, a sense of, of loss of independence um, and all, all that kind of emotional stuff that can come with it. So I'm hoping you'll tell us today, what are some of the things that, that we can do while providing that care? Like some, some easy tips and tricks, things that we can, can use right away to, to help us feel a little bit more comfortable. Absolutely. Um, and, and like you said, the, the relationship you have is, is different every time. So for me, I have to go in and I meet a person and in a lot of situations right away, I have to provide them with care. So I have to get comfortable with them very fast. And I have to also make sure that they're comfortable with me because um, I don't want to go in there and start doing stuff and they have no idea who I am or, um, you know, so when you walk into a room, they tell us you create the vibe that you bring in. So you have to be relaxed. And it's the same thing as um, when you're caring for a parent, if they, they know you really well. Um, they sense your anxieties. Um, and the best thing you can do is to just talk to them about it and uh, talk about um, their awkwardness or their feelings of, of, of awkwardness or loss of independence. Um, and by talking about it, you kind of get a framework for how they're feeling, um, what their fears are. Are they afraid of losing their independence? Um, some some people say their, their parents were fiercely independent and struggled a lot with losing that independence. Um, so there's 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 ways you can navigate that too. Um, and the first thing is is providing reassurance and saying, you know, it, I'm here to help you do the things that you've always done. I, I I'm not here to do them for you and take that away from you. 
um, it, I'm just here to prolong you being able to do the things you've always done so you can enjoy your life the way you always have. Yeah, that's really great too. Like, so can you give me like a concrete example of what that would look like where like somebody has lost their independence because you are helping them or they've lost some of their independence at least. So what does that look like in practice trying to, to help them maintain that independence? Um, so when you think about it, um, a lot of caregivers um, taking care of their family members are, you know, a lot of folks with dementia, Alzheimer's. Um, so for a lot of them, um, they have this, this, this feeling of loss of independence. So, um, you know, things like toileting, they used to be able to just, you know, take their pants down, go to the washroom, clean themselves up, no issues. Now, you know, it might look different. They might have safe safeguards for for toileting. They may have wear depends. Um, they may they may need your help with um, with cleanup. So, um, you know, there's there's certain things you can do. So, for example, with going to the, helping somebody in the shower, or go to the washroom you want to try and give them as much privacy as possible. So um, a good way for them to have privacy in the washroom is to find safeguards for them, you know, like um, a bar to hold on to, um, you know, you can explain to them, okay, I'm going to help you. Uh, I'm just going to help you with your pants. And, you know, a lot of people are, are nervous. They feel the need to be there in the washroom with the person for fear of them falling or but it's it's really it's much more comfortable for them and they're a lot less nervous if somebody isn't watching them so kind of think about right. what, what you would want so if you're nervous like i said you can look into those safeguards or you can stand just outside the door where they don't see you um and you can hear if they're they're struggling to stand or um or mm -hmm. if they're getting confused in there they need help with something um, and, you know, going in there, it, they may react differently. You might have, you might have some, you, you might be taking care of somebody who is totally fine and, you know, makes jokes about it. Go with that. Um, if they enjoy humor and that makes them feel better, then it's okay. Um, I'm not telling you to go in there and laugh at somebody <laughs> and like make fun of them, but if they're, no. Uh, if you're you just kind of go with what they're let them lead how yeah so if they're making jokes about it then they're obviously you know that's helping them in, in whatever way diffuse the tension that they're feeling or or how maybe they're doing it to help you feel less awkward or whatever it might be right absolutely um, and when you yeah. have that discussion in the beginning about you know where your awkwardness is or whatever you can you'll you'll have that framework to navigate um, what kind of humor you can get away with. You know what I mean? And and in right. this case, you know your parent or you know your loved one or you know, so you kind of have an idea of what's going to go over well. Like my mom, humor would go very well with her. Um, for me, um, I'm a little bit more reserved with my mom. I'm a prude. So it would be me that has the feelings of, oh, you know, um, I feel weird saying this. Um, so that's something I have to address in myself too. And sometimes it's not the caregiver that feels awkward. It's you. And mm -hmm. you yeah. have to figure that out so that it, it doesn't feel so funny for them. And you're trying to figure out how to feel less awkward. And you're also really um, conscious of how they're feeling. And it can be really tricky. Um, one thing I find helps me when I'm feeling um, nervous um, because even now I still get nervous around certain certain people because you have a different relationship with everybody you meet um, I will I always say what I'm doing I always tell them everything um, I'm doing and it gives them the opportunity to say no um, it makes them feel more reassured um, it makes them feel like um, the reassurance from your voice that you're there to help them. Um, but it also keeps you 
thinking about the task that you're, you're doing. Um, that this that that you're you're taking care of your your parent. Okay, I'm doing this. I'm doing this, and it kind of distracts you from your awkward feelings. I find that really helps me. Um, or just okay. talking about something else. So I'll like like a running monologue. Okay, now I'm going to you know whatever it is. Uh, you know, lift up your pants. Or now I'm going to, and that yeah, I like that, and it gives. Um, a chance for them to consent to that's i think really important um nat uh, so i just want to take a moment to to address some comments that are coming in we have a few people watching um please don't be shy to ask uh erica questions in the chat we have nat Absolutely. who said it's such an important talk but such a tough one as well so difficult emotionally and that is that is so true um because like I said, we're we're dealing with this change in our relationship. It, it can be something that we're um, really both sides are, are struggling to to come to terms with, or you know, like it. it th there's so many feelings that can come up in that time on on top of you know the task at hand that needs to get done as well, and then having to navigate those feelings at the same time. And then we have. We have Deborah on as well, who's uh, saying it's the first time that she's joining us. So welcome. Um, and she says, what a great resource. Um, it, it really is. So for anybody who doesn't know about Connections uh, Caregivers Circle, um, I'm I'm the coordinator. I'm working to um, prepare all sorts of workshops for caregivers of seniors um and also a support group a peer support group so it's if anybody is interested in uh joining our peer support group uh connecting with people who are going through the same kinds of things and also tapping into our our experts that we're we bring in for our workshops our guest speakers uh check out our website and sign up for these these really great um uh, really great resources for caregivers, for sure. I'm going to go ahead and put some links in the chat for anybody who wants to come to our next events. Um, we have one coming up uh, in March, or we have one March 10th in person in Shawville. So anybody who is um, local in Shawville can come by on the 10th, and we're going to talk about technology that can help uh, with caregiving. So there's all sorts of apps and things that are out there now that can help make our jobs a little easier. So we're going to go through those things. Uh, and then we have another really great one coming up on March 23rd um, called Good Grief, where we have um, a grief and bereavement counselor, Julie Keon, coming on and talking to us about grief um, in all of its manifestations. So uh, it's not just losing somebody grief as as we all know can be it's the way we process any kind of loss so that can be something like uh, the loss of autonomy of a loved one a change in the relationship um and so that's something when we're providing personal care to come back to our topic at hand uh that we are dealing with grief at the same time as as we're we're doing these things right um so yeah, like uh, I know also Erica during our workshop, like I said before, we had Erica come in for a workshop and she gave us some really great, during the workshop, we talked about everything. We talked about um, <laughs> briefs, disposable briefs, maybe. Um, and so like there are no topics that are taboo during our, our caregiver circles because we're all going through the same kinds of things uh, it's really great to be able to discuss things like you know you might not be able to discuss buying adults uh disposable underwear <laughs> with all of your friends necessarily but in our in our groups it's a safe space for that and uh yeah you had given some some tips about vocabulary erica which uh, i'd love for you to elaborate on now absolutely so <laughs> Yeah, nothing, nothing really, uh, really phases phases me anymore. I've heard everything. I can discuss anything at dinner time. So, 
Um, yeah, it's it's hard because you can, like Michelle said, you can't have these conversations with just anybody. Sometimes it's, uh, but yeah. So uh, in terms of language, we all have language that you know kind of grinds our gears. Somebody will say, "Oh, you know, like does does he does he still understand? Does he still um, is is he wearing a diaper? Um, oh, he's wearing she's wearing a bib." Um, and sometimes those those words can feel wrong because you know this is your parent that they're that that is being referred to you know like even doctors sometimes will will say you know diaper or um so there are alternate words that can you know be a little bit more conducive to dignity um you can use instead of um diaper and that being said there's some people i've worked with who that's their humor. They laugh. They're like, yeah, I'm in a diaper now. This is where I am. And if that's their choice, that's okay. Because that's that's humor. Like I said before, you just go with it. Um, most people prefer the word brief. So it, um, yeah, like the one caregiver had said that their, their husband used the word diaper and was fine with it. So that's what she used, right? So it all depends on the individual for sure. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and that's that's the thing. Some people they're totally real about it, and they totally love it, and they're like, "Whatever, this is a stage in my life." Um, like just radical acceptance. And then there's a lot of people, a lot of people who have a really hard time with it. So, so be mindful of language mm -hmm. because that can make somebody feel um, really, really in um, dependent and invalid. Um, if you use the word diaper versus brief or underwear, um, one guy, he, he love, he'd, he'd love if I called it underpants, underpants was his word and he was nonverbal. So I, I, I used a variety of different words to see which one kind of like stuck for him, which one he reacted to and he, that it was underpants, um, you know, and then there's, there's sometimes too, like, um, when you're eating, oh, okay, you need a bib. I, I, I use shirt guard or shirt cover um, because something as simple as the right language can make somebody feel a little bit better about the situation that they're in and feel a little bit more supported. Yeah, we did, we talked a lot about preserving dignity during our workshop, right? Um, and d dignity comes with independence. So I really like how, you know, you, you really promoted making sure that we, we're we not treating them like um, they're still adults too, right? So even like using words like diaper or bib, we wanna make sure that we're using adult words, like unless otherwise stated by the person, like, hey, I, I would, you know, we go with the vocabulary they feel most comfortable with, but um, I think that's really important. Preserving yeah, no. the dignity of the, of the person that we're caring for. Um, and that comes, I think, too, with asking them, right? And when we're asking them about how they're feeling about things and just talking about it and putting it out in the open instead of, you know, everybody kind of walking on eggshells. <laughs> Absolutely. Talking about it can really just like, it's like in anything, it really eases the tension because you you don't have to wonder, you know, where, where everybody's standing and what they're feeling and you can you can work with something if you know what it is. Um, if you're kind of walking around on eggshells, like you said, not knowing, you know, which, what they're feeling, they don't know what you're feeling. The, the, the vibe is weird. Um, it, it, you're not, you're not, you're not clearing it up by not saying anything. So talking about it and letting them talk about it and giving them all the space they need will make it so it's, it's easier for them. Um, because being able to feel like they still have a say is ultimately what's most important to them. And it is their life and they should have a say and they are adults and they deserve to be treated as such. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it's like if they, Brenda is saying that, I said we have Brenda in the chat saying that she likes that using the wording like a shirt cover um, to, to preserve their dignity. So yeah, it's something simple, vocabulary, right? But it can have a powerful effect. 
just the words that we use around what we're doing. There's so many simple things you can do and, and you have to be innovative sometimes. Like um, I've worked with people who are shy in, in the, in the bathtub. Um, so, you know, I give them a towel. The towel yeah. is meant for drying, but who cares if it gets wet? It's meant to get wet. So yeah. letting them, you know, cover up in the, in the shower with a towel, it's, I'll work with that. You know, I've had to, I've helped mm. people bathe when they won't tolerate anything but being on their back or on their stomach, you know, I'll work with that. Um, you try and make it as comfortable for a person as possible. And, you know, if it, if you have to throw it, give them a towel or a blanket or, you know, take off one shirt garment at a time. Um, there, there's, there's lots of ways you just kind of have to figure it out. But again, it goes back to talking about it and seeing where, where the needs are. Right, right. Another thing um, that I wanted to, to talk about um, briefly before we left too was now I'm not, for, I'm not remembering it. <laughs> I'm drawing a blank. There was another great point. Let me just look at my notes here. Um, oh yeah, no, no, I'm not thinking about it. Um, yeah, humor. We talked about humor for sure. Um, how important that is, the vocabulary, and talking through it as we're we're performing the actions, kind of verbalizing what we're doing. Really, really great. Um, oh yes, that's it. It was really important, and I didn't want to forget it <laughs> because it is so important, and it's something that comes up in the caregiver groups. Um, People have a hard time asking for help. So what if providing personal care is just outside of your realm? Like maybe it makes you too uncomfortable. Maybe it makes you too awkward. Maybe it makes the person you're caring for not feel good about, like they don't want it, the relationship to change in that kind of way, whatever it might be. Or your plate just might be overflowing, right? And you don't, you just can't make it happen. So I know that a lot of caregivers have a hard time. You know, they want to try and do everything themselves. They feel like they should. But I want you to kind of touch on that. What do you, like, when when should you ask for help? And so for me, the way I see it, um, and we learned about this in school, actually, there's, the, there's a whole whack of people most often who feel guilty um, if they aren't doing everything, if they, you know, are at putting it off on somebody else or, but it, it's not like that. The, the, for you to be able to better um, be there for your loved one, you need a break sometimes or you need help sometimes. And, you, you know, that's where, that's where I have a job. I can come in and I can give that. Um, and I was professionally trained. I have loads of experience. I've seen a lot of things. Not just I, I'm not just talking about me, but the the people like me. And there's a whole community of us who love mm -hmm. doing this, um, and we thrive on doing it, um, on on helping people live their lives to the best of their ability, to the best of their potential, for as long as they can. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there that, that can help you. Um, there's one. Absolutely. And there, there are definitely resources for any caregivers, you know, like reach out to connections. If you're wondering, you know, where do I turn? Where can I find support? Um, we have, you know, lists of resources. We can help you um, take those steps to, to finding some more help and support when you get to that point where your plate is just <laughs> you can't stack it any higher and it's starting to the, you know <laughs> the morsels of food are starting to fall off <laughs> yeah and that's the thing if you if you're overwhelmed and you don't know and it, it and that's the thing you want the best care for you for your for your loved one um so sometimes asking for help is the best way to to give the best care um because you can't mm -hmm. do everything nobody can I love, that. I love that sometimes asking for help is the best way you know, to give the best care. We need to like write that down as a, as a quote. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, that's really great. 
And um, I thank you so much, Erica, for, for joining us today. Um, for anybody out there who is a caregiver of seniors, um, please uh, take a moment to sign up for our newsletter. Uh, we now have um, multiple newsletters. So we have our regular newsletter, but we also have a special one for caregivers. We also have one for 55 plus and for families as well. So make sure to check that out. I'm going to put the link in the in the chat as well afterwards. Um, subscribe to our newsletters. That's the best way to learn about um, every all the upcoming events, what's going on. And also, of course, always make sure to check out our website and our Facebook page to know what's coming up. I, I hope that some of you watching today will sign up for some of our events coming up because we have some really great. Oh, and also we have a chat coming up on the 22nd with uh, Latch Community Sundaram who joined us for um, a caregiver circle uh, in February as well. And she'll be talking to us about self-care for caregivers. How can we practice mindfulness and take care of ourselves when we have very little time to do so. So more practical tips coming up for you soon uh, with that. And of course, our workshops in Shawville on the 10th and the 23rd of March. So don't miss those either. Um, thanks everybody. Happy Monday. I hope that you have an excellent week and take care. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.